sensory reading cards is um, there's something that can be applied to a lot of different things, um, different events, different experiences. Um, and it's basically just a document that'll kind of inform you about what kind of sensory impact a certain experience has. Um, so for example, it'll rate like um, the audio impact and the visual impact. So if you're going to a concert and there's flashing lights or really bright lights, um, you know, that the sensory rating card would have that noted um, and they're rated by numbers. So um, if something has a lot going on visually, then it would be a higher number in visual. So it's just like a quick way to kind of know what to expect sensory wise. So someone can kind of prepare themselves for an experience. I'm a really big gamer and um, I've been, so I want to go to university to kind of study game development and immersive experiences and accessibility within those areas. Um, and just kind of, I've been doing these sensory rating cards for different events for a while. And I just kind of was playing game one day and I was just like, well, I could probably apply the same concept in a similar way. Um, and so I just got started with it and just tested it out a bit. and. It, you know, I've made about, I think maybe five so far, I've, I've just started, but um, it just seemed like something that could help people who don't really know what to expect going into a game. And if someone has a specific issue with maybe they don't like really loud, sudden sounds, um, or if, you know, for like horror games, if they don't like jump scares or something like that, it's just a way to inform people. And I just thought it'd be a good idea. It's really varied because everyone's different. And so, cause sensory processing dis disability, it kind of covers a lot of things. Um, and so if there's someone with like audio issues, for example, um, maybe, you know, they have a hard time understanding what someone's saying um, when they're speaking. And so subtitles can really help for something like that. Um, a lot of games already have subtitles, thankfully. Um, or if they struggle when there's a lot of like um, interacting sound or like um, conflicting sound. So if you're in a game environment where there's, you know, there's background noise and maybe there's someone talking over here and there's something happening over here and there's just a lot going on that can be kind of stressful or it can just be like frustrating. Um, and then visually, if something, you know, if there's just like a lot going on, like it's very visually busy mm -hmm. or if there's something really bright, something really colorful or there's like flashing lights um and tactile you know some some games have if you have a controller they'll vibrate um and then with some kind of um like horror games like i mentioned before could have like jump scares which could you know make you scared and there's some a lot of games designed to make you feel a certain way so um it's it's really all about just like kind of having at least a warning going into it or maybe not a warning but just like to know what you're getting into basically I think it really depends on the person. Um, I think that horror games are probably the most widely kind of um, hard to play, if that makes sense. So for a lot of people, they kind of are difficult, um, but it's really, really individual. And so um, for some games, if they're just really like, you know, if there's just a lot going on visually, if there's something really bright, um, or if some games have a lot going on auditorily, like it really is, um, it's hard to pinpoint an exact game or type of game because it's just so individual to the person. Um, and so what I kind of aim to do is um, make something that would work for everyone, or at least um, just something that can be kind of widely applied because it's just so specific to the person. I think so, I think definitely film, because um, film kind of has a lot of similar elements, you know, with visual and audio. Um, Music, I think definitely, yeah, if, you know, a certain song might have a lot of, you know, either conflicting audio or maybe a sudden really loud sound. Um, I think it can be applied to a lot of things. Yeah. Well, my goal, you know, as I plan to go into that industry is to um, think of accessibility and universal design from the start. So, you know, what I'm doing right now with the sensory rating cards, it's kind of something that's being applied after the game's already out, it's already done. They're not working on it anymore. But my goal would be um, to consider that from the start. And so, and that could play out in a lot of ways. You know, like right now they already do, a lot of games will have subtitles. Um, some games will have a flash warning, um, but it could be something like, you know, the option to 
either have maybe some sort of sensory rating built into the game menu, so it's really just convenient and easy to access. Um, it could be, you know, maybe just more options like, oh, disable, you know, super bright lights or disable flashing lights or, you know, provide me with a warning, you know, before something sudden like a loud sound or a bright light happens. Um, so it could play out in a lot of ways, um, but my main goal would just be for that to actually be applied in the development of the game rather than kind of just an afterthought. I haven't seen um, anything really targeted specifically to mental disabilities. Um, the closest thing I've seen, like I've said, would be those subtitles or the flash warnings. That's kind of the only um, accessibility related things I've really seen in games. Um, I'm sure, you know, I could be missing something where I, ha I just haven't seen it yet. Um, I've seen a couple of games, they'll have like a, f a fear warning. Like I played a, I played a game about like you're the size of a bug and they had an arachnophobia warning and the ability to kind of like turn that setting off. Um, so I think it's definitely kind of coming around, but I really haven't seen that much of it. I think so, definitely. Um, especially with my generation, we kind of spend all of our time on screens. Um, and so I think it's really important to be able to recognize, you know, what are the health effects of that? And, um, you know, if you play, like being able to recognize like, you know, this kind of game or this thing in a game just elicits this response in me and to be able to know that and be able to prepare for it. Um, and yeah, I think it is important. My favorite are kind of, I really like open world games because I, I like the ability to kind of just walk around and just like the freedom that provides you. Um, I really like RPGs, um, anything just really immersive. Like I think my favorite thing about games is that a really good one can kind of allow you to forget about everything else. And you're kind of just, you know, in this other world and sometimes you're a different person. Um, and so anything that's just kind of like really immersive, like I really love Breath of the Wild because, you know, the environment's so beautiful and you just, you feel like you're actually in the world. Um, games like Fallout 4, um, I really like Cyberpunk, just at, basically anything that's um, just really immersive and has like a really well built out world. I think, you know, if someone's playing a game and something happens that makes them have a negative response, um, you know, obviously they probably have to stop playing the game. They might be scared to go back to the game. Um, and so just if someone was able to have the peace of mind where either, you know, I know that they're going to warn me before something happens or I know that I've turned this specific thing off in the settings. Um, so, you know, they know beforehand that that will be taken care of. Um, that they're able to just enjoy the game instead of being kind of like on edge, like, oh, is something gonna happen that's gonna make me have a negative response? You know, if you're excluding anyone, you're losing money, right? Like, uh, it's just a whole population of people that isn't able to play this game, isn't able to purchase the game. Um, they just, you know, they don't feel like they can play the game. And so, you know, it might require like a small investment during the development, you know, to test, oh, is this thing accessible? Like what things in our game could trigger a response? Um, but I think that the benefit of having such a large population of people now able to actually play the game would really pay off. Um, so I think it would definitely be a financial gain. I've, I've only made like a few um, rating cards just of the games I've already played. So um, like Fallout 4, I mentioned earlier, I made one for, I was trying to do kind of a different variety of games. So I did one for Animal Crossing because that's definitely a way more kind of relaxed, um, calm game. Um, I did one for Detroit Become Human, and I'm working on one, um, a game called The Climb, which is a VR game. And so um, right now I'm basically just doing all the games I've already played um, and just trying to get those out. Um, but it's my goal is to do kind of just a, a wide variety of games and also um, try to do the ones that are because the ones that are most popular right now, because I feel like that'll serve the most amount of people.